Do we have too much government? We need to put uh, people in ahead of corporate profits. This system is so lopsided. This threat is a real threat to democracy. And I think that's really important. That's something we haven't been doing in this country for a long time. Where do you start? What do you do? How do you do it? Access to Democracy and other Egan Community Television programming is supported by Thomson Reuters, makers of Westlaw Next and based in Egan. Through Westlaw Next and other innovative online services, Thomson Reuters is the world's leading source of intelligent information for businesses and professionals. Online at ThomsonReuters.com and by U.S. Federal Credit Union the member-owned financial institution offering service, value, and experience you can trust to the greater Twin Cities community. Welcome. Access to Democracy returns. Alan Miller returns. But he returns with one of his very favorite guests. And there used to be a program on television called The Bickersons. Uh, this was a couple who fought over everything. Mm -hmm. Pat Anderson and I have not agreed, uh, certainly politically, over very much. That's right. But she is one of my favorite guests, and she will go toe to toe with anybody. Uh, from the days when she was Egan's mayor, uh, served in both state and national positions mm -hmm. with the Republican Party, mm -hmm. and. Uh, you and your administration were responsible for so much, along with Tom Hedges, of the good things that have happened here in Egan. Yeah, thanks, Alan. Thanks. I, I, we're really in your debt for that. Yeah, well, thanks. So it was, you know, I spent... It's a, a truism. Well, <laughs> and I'm glad to be... You know, I'm glad that, that, that uh, we could bicker without you know, reaching across the aisle and killing each other, like what we've been seeing, you know, going on in, uh, it's in D.C., and it's just crazy. has gotten so partisan yeah. uh, where nobody is even listening to anybody else. Yeah. They're just spouting their own line. They won't, they won't negotiate. It's, uh, you know, yeah. I don't see how anything gets done, and mostly it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. So, you know, so. I mean, Alan, even I, you know, as a, as a, as a Republican, know that once in a while, once in a while, there's a good idea out of Democrats that you got to grab. So, <laughs> and people just seem to have lost that. Yeah, I think uh, they have. Yeah, certainly in Congress, they're so interested in keeping their own job and their mm -hmm. own position uh, mm -hmm. that they forget that they took an oath under the Constitution to do the best that they can for the country. Yeah. And I'm not talking about Republicans. I'm not talking about no, Democrats. It's both I'm talking about Absolutely. all of them. Yep. Absolutely. Both parties. Um, I've never seen it in my lifetime like this. No, and, uh, I know. It's it, kind of sad. I worry about the future of our country because if you can't, you know, if you have a situation like this in Washington where, where all or almost all the politicians are so insulated and, like you said, they just care about you know, getting their own job, you know, keeping their own jobs and that power and whatever. And, and you have this very, very, very um, almost mean, you know, partisan politics that's occurring. Nothing can get done. And nothing is getting done. That's and you it. can't nothing move the country forward yeah. if you can't get anything done. You can't lead if you can't get anything done. The debt ceiling should be a given to me. You know, I mean, you know, there have been well, 40 votes on the debt ceiling. I know you think we should cut down on government. Absolutely. The, cut down the fact government. of the matter right. is we've cut the national debt in half. In well, the last from four the highs years. of the well, sure, but that's I mean, those were the highs of the highs. But you know, the the point is that you know there are lots of opinions out there from the left to the right to the middle, and but somehow you have to come to some um, agreement or conclusion, and you have to move forward. And you have to move the country forward, who and that's we, what's not happening. Who I are think. we here to serve? We're here to serve right. the people, but they don't take that attitude. Right. We're here to serve our own mm -hmm. ideological position, mm -hmm. and that's very bad. Yeah. It's very yeah. bad. Yeah, it is. I so. think I saw it with the Viking Stadium, mm -hmm. which I think uh, has become pretty much of a disaster. Mm -hmm. I told and you it would be. Remember we you talked did. about you the did. financing mechanisms, <coughs> and I mean this whole, you know, And And bad, the people that we're bill. dealing with, uh, yeah. I, I consider that family to be Alibaba and the 40 Thieves, <laughs> uh, according to a judge in New Jersey. Yeah, that's just what they are. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, is that what you want, really, 
coming in for one reason, to make money, and to put very little in when they get yeah. a billion dollar stadium. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, granted, yeah, it's great, great for the community, but uh, uh, there are other things that are great for the community also. That's right, and it was a, just a poorly done bill, and it was done with pie in the sky figure. And there isn't any single person you can blame because you know, at the time it was, uh, you know, Governor Dayton's a Democrat, it was the Republican legislature that yeah, passed uh, it. So, no. And they all did it together and they, they, were, they, I, were they did it very secretively. I, could, I was there, you know, it was all done in a back room and, you know. And, the Minnesota and, Orchestra yeah. folding, is, yeah. I think is an outrage. Yeah. I think it's really an embarrassment. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Let's talk about some positives, though. Okay. But things happening in Egan. Uh, especially at Cedarvale, uh, amazing. Now that uh, all started under your watch. As a matter of fact, when we had the 800-year flood, mm -hmm. uh, that water was running right down there. It was. A man was yep. drowned right down there, yep. and you were right in the middle of it. Yeah, yep. And Cedarvale got really hard hit uh, with that that flood that we had. Um, uh, we did have a death. Uh, we had lots of homes destroyed. We had, you know, a lot of problems down there, and. Frankly, the, the Cedarville neighborhoods, I'm talking about the housing, you know, going back, pushed up to 35E, you know, from Cedarville. Um, you know, they, it's, they've seen Egan evolve. That was the original housing in Egan. Um, and they've seen it evolve, and you had a lot of development that came in in the eastern part of Egan and southern Egan and um, Cedarville Mall. And look what's... Right. Coming there now. And now it's a huge, right, it's a huge revival from something that... 140 was, uh, stores, it's going to be great for business. Fantastic. And yep. especially with its location, it's not going to really, really hinder anybody in their homes, I don't think. No, because, because people will come right off the freeway. You have um, 13 yep. there, you have 35 there, you have major Cedar. roadways yep. there, yeah. Yep. And... Uh, I, I think it's just uh, going to be a wonderful thing for yeah. Egan yeah. and for its tax base also. Yeah, absolutely. And frankly, um, it will be nice to be able to buy more <laughs> clothing in Egan because for years we were sort of, you know, we used to joke, now this is 20 years ago, right? But we used to joke that you couldn't even buy, you know, a pair of socks in Egan at one point. And you couldn't until Walmart came in and Kohl's. And, um, but we kind of got skipped over for retail because you have... Burnsville Center, um, all the shops in Robert Street in that area, and then the Mall of America. So the retailers would say, well, you're too close to Burnsville Center. You're and the stores close. that are coming in These are, are top drawer top stores. Drawer, yeah. wonderful and stores so, uh, at a discount, which makes it even better. That right? makes it right? absolutely better. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's fantastic. This is wonderful. You know, it's too bad it took a long time to get this done, but... You know, we had a lot of properties that um, the council, since I, you know, the existing council, but they had to put together um, you know, a lot you of up, sites. Up and moved away. I did. I fell in love and you know, got married again. That was my. But I miss the. Like I said, I still have my house here, so maybe I'll be back sometime. Well, yep. there we go. Yep. So, <coughs> but uh, um, no, it's it's fantastic. And uh, recently, I know there was an apartment building. If you drive in the corner of um, 13 and Silver Bell, that's the entrance right. into the small right. there, um there is a uh, very high-end apartment building. I think it has three or 400 units um, that's going to be built right on that corner with retail underneath. And there's a senior um, citizen's home right, right there also the street, right away. Right. And there are some new condos right. that are going yep. up. Yep. So it's what happening used to be, very I don't fast. know, is now Cedarvale Boulevard or something like that. I think they're yeah. renaming some and the important that, thing so. is that Jensen's is not going any place. No, it's they're going to be surrounded by a, new customers, <coughs> so they're going to be a, in great shape. But I think you will see all those other parcels that haven't been purchased yet. I think you'll see them go in the next oh, yeah. year or two. It's yeah, going to just explode a, down there. So yeah, it's, good it's a stuff. good thing. Yeah, it is. It's really a good thing. So. And, uh, I'm you, excited about what's happening you here. You had a great navigator really working with you and Tom Hedges. Yeah. And uh, Tom Tom was the best, there's no question. Absolutely, yeah. And such a good city administrator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, he's going to be 
Well, he's not going anywhere. So, but no. I would say he's we really have a good one. Going to be well I mean, missed. Yeah, Dave so Osberg is he's done really very well. talented, yep. and yep. Uh, I think he's cut of the same mold. He used I to be too. an intern of Tom's, as right. a matter of fact. Right. Um, um, I had the um, the pleasure of sitting on the community uh, interviewing team. We had the, when they were trying to find a new city administrator, they got some folks that are active in the community uh, to. To form a panel, and we interviewed all the candidates, the final candidates, um, and I was really impressed with Dave. Uh, he came, you know, he's he he w was an intern here at one point. He came out of Hastings. He knows Dakota County. Um, I think he has a very good style, different than Tom Hedges certainly, um, but uh, uh, just a really good style. And he well, his basic values, I think, are the same at, as Tom's. Right, right, <coughs> and that's right. what's important. Yep, yeah. yep. So I think we're in good hands. Um, he is not, he's going to be here a while. I think he's going to finish his career here, uh, which I think I was important. So. Yes. You know, um, continuity. You that continuity, exactly. As so. with so many of our city managers and, and uh, people who are commissioners and things like that. Right, right. Yeah. And that's important because mm -hmm. you have, um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, just institutional knowledge. Not that, you know, people should be here forever, but. But there is a lot of institutional knowledge. We've been knowledge doing this show 15 years now. Would you really? believe that? Really? Wow. Over, I remember when over, you started. Over 1,500 yeah. interviews. Yeah. yeah. Tim, yeah. Tim Pawlenty was yeah. my first interview. Yeah. It was a terrible interview. He wasn't terrible. I was. Well, you know. And, uh, you know, we've, we've come a long way we've since then. We've come a then. long way. Yep. So, yep. That, uh, yeah. So I think there's great things going on in Egan right now, um, just with, you know, Development, I think Egan is still, even though there's been some job losses, you know, like over the last, during the recession, um, I think that that's going to start to come back. Uh, and I think Tax base is very solid here, though. Very solid. And that's yep. really yep. important. That's what yep. makes Egan such a great city. Yep, yep. And uh, anybody that would move to Delwood uh, from <laughs> I, Egan, I, I can't, didn't under have a choice. can't understand. Well, I didn't have a choice. <laughs> So. Could have moved Delwood here. Well, I couldn't because we, it was a kid school issue. So, you know. But um, speaking of kids, I have only one left. Can you believe that? I have a 16-year-old, and then I have uh, all the other ones are out of the house, in college mostly. So, except summer times, apparently. Yes, unfortunately, yeah. they uh, they were a lot of them were home. This they know summer. how to find their way home. They do. It's amazing. Yep. yep. Eat See what we did. We we moved half a country away from ours, there so they go. can't that's, find their way home so easily. Yeah, that's the next step, and, I uh, think. <laughs> yeah, but anyway. Yeah. Pat was here. Well, you're usually here for at least once a year, anyway. Yeah. Yep. And uh, you were here in February, right after you were here. You came out with an article where you, as a conservative Republican, endorsed same-sex marriage. Mm -hmm made some of the people in your party hysterical, but you have, had, did, a, you yeah. have had a tendency yeah. to do that I with have, people in yeah. your party, simply because, and it's one of the reasons I really respect you, you call them as you see them, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. you always have, mm -hmm. and, and you were right, yeah. and actually that's something that should have been a no-brainer, mm -hmm. uh, and it went away. Yeah, well, uh, and even the Pope now has said that who is he to judge, you know? So you know, we just a, talked about yeah, the Pope in the yeah. last show we had with yeah. Rick King and, yeah. and Paul Anderson, and yeah. uh, uh, he seems to be a forward-thinking individual, mm -hmm. which is what I think the Catholic Church really yeah. needed. Yeah. And, uh, well, I look at the same-sex marriage debate from a really a libertarian perspective, a limited government, should we say, perspective, which is what I tend to be a more, more, little more libertarian. The You've actually gotten more libertarian over the years, I think. Probably, you know. So. The, I get older, I get more wiser. Yeah. But not, not, <laughs> not Ron Paul and Rand Paul type of libertarian. Well, you know, yours has been sane as far as I can see. Yeah. Well, well, you know, I think. Anyway, we're not going to talk about um, the uh, the debate about the if, if from the perspective of government. Um, you know, marriage is really a contract. That's all it is from the perspective of a government. It's something that's put in statute that gives people contract, con you know, And it shouldn't rights. be part right. of government. It should, right. And that's really is a libertarian argument. The government shouldn't even be involved in marriage. It should be a, you know. Um, so, uh, you know, if you You if don't you need a church. You don't need a temple. You don't need uh, any a mosque to be married. Right. It is... Well, 
something where you have a contract. You might need a license. Right. Uh, but it's a contractual thing that, that provides rights and privileges and also responsibilities, right? You are now responsible for the credit card debts of your new spouse. If they go ring them up, you're half responsible. It's a, so it's a it's really a contractual relationship. And so it's it's hard to to argue that government can um, discriminate based on gender if we say two people can create a contract by signing this form which is the marriage license right it's hard to, to it's hard to argue that that they have to be of opposite sexes and and so that's part of the argument and frankly it's just you know how it's going. and you know as some of us will say if you know if uh, two people want to get married and and you know they want to put up with that they want to yes. put up with each other <laughs> they go ahead so you know it's that so um and yeah. you have a lot of um uh, uh same-sex couples that are raising children together now and so um th through either adoption or through donation you know sperm do those are things and sometimes insemination right, of one of right, the partners right. if it's females right and a little so, tough if they're males but well, it's that's true. That. yeah but because of that, it's not good for children to, you know, in those relationships to have their parents. You want their parents to be married. So, you know, that's the better thing. Um, for, so it's, that was really the argument. And statistics and are showing that those kids are just as normal yes, and yes, yeah. or as screwed up as anybody else's yeah, kids. I have an aunt who is gay and, and she has kids. And, you know, so, and I, and of course the debate's over, at least in Minnesota. Um, it's still raging on nationally, you know, um, but uh, a lot of Republicans agree with me, a lot of them. So well, they talk obviously about did in the election. Republicans oh, they yeah. agree very much yeah. with this so, position. So looking at government mm -hmm. from your skewed conservative yes. pr perspective, <laughs> what do you think government has an obligation to supply to its people? I think government's role is... Um, to supply things that create sort of the basic infrastructure of public safety. Public safety. I don't think anybody would argue right, about that. Right. Uh, roads and bridges. These are infrastructure, infrastructure things. But also, part of infrastructure is a set of rules and laws, right? That every a level playing field that everyone can can play on, knowing the, you know, the the rules of the game. Like um, single payer health care. No, <laughs> that, no, not health care. Absolutely not health care. But. Yeah. We're not going to get into that because sure we just are. came off this in Washington. Sure we are. <laughs> but I, okay. I think some sort of basic education. Is, does government need to be the provider in a public school system? You know, that whole ch school choice argument. No, but it has to provide a, a way for society to educate its people, some sort of a system. I think the founding fathers that. saw yeah. public education as the way to go. Educating the public think. is a is a good thing. Well, yeah. that's public education. No, it's not. It's so, have, just like in regards to streets, we don't, in Egan, we don't have, uh, we have some people, some of our own employees that, that plow the streets, but we don't build the streets. We hire outside contractors, privately owned, to build the streets, yet we design it, and we, you know, so that's, you know. That's where we differ. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am so. a product of public education. I am too. And, yeah. uh, you know, I think that that's the way to go. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to health care, I, I do think that's one of the basic things that government has a duty to provide at least across the board so that everybody has health care available to them. Now, you would disagree with me on single payer. Right. Uh, which. But uh, I, I have to tell you, Alan, I think that's where we're heading, uh, which I, is so I hope most so, Republicans. But uh, more than the mess well, that we're in right now, where we have a little bit of this and a little bit of that, I think it's wonderful that 30 million more people have the opportunity to have health insurance. I think it's great that kids up to 26 mm -hmm. can be contained, retained on their parents' uh, policies, things like that. I think that that makes us a better society, and I think if we get people out of emergency rooms, it's, absolutely, it's they got to get out of emergency room. But what what's going to happen is because it's I, this is what I predict is going to happen, and I think a lot of um, people on both sides would agree, and that's part of what this debate was in Washington. But you you 
ultimately this will collapse into single payer because government anyway is already buying the majority of the health care. Medicare for everybody. Through, right. But what it what it provides is that um, every but there there will be a basic government level of health care that everyone will get, but only the people that can afford it, just like in Europe, they will have extra insurance. There'll be private things. And so you will have a very tiered system. Whereas now someone on Medicaid, say, can get similar health care to someone who is wealthy and has their, buying their own policy and this and this. That's not going to be the case down the road. Um, yes, everybody will have a basic level under single payer, as long as but they won't have good health care. As long as that poor person is not denied health care simply because they're poor. But they're not now. We have That's what Medicaid's for. No, they go into it's, the emergency room right. and all of us who have health care pay for that Absolutely. ten times as much. And uh, I right, had a couple of episodes this year where some the, of the prices we that I the saw laws that way. are are absolutely you know, saying astronomical. Saying that emergency rooms yeah. can't turn anyone down. That's a, those are <clears throat> laws that we wrote that didn't, you know, I don't know. That's what I think is going to happen. So when is Pat uh, Anderson getting back into politics? I don't know. I'm doing my, my party <clears throat> stuff. You know, I'm still on the exec board of the Republican Party. Um, I'm going to be helping some candidates you know, this election cycle, but I am not a candidate for anything, and I don't know what I'm going to do. But you Alan. have been a candidate, and have. you have been an office holder, yep. and uh, mm -hmm. well, you're still presently an office holder, but not, yeah. not yeah. a uh, yeah. public, right. Pro right. rather, a, a You know, it's tough candidate. in Minnesota. Um, <clears throat> we haven't, you know, I've been a statewide um, office holder and candidate, and, you know, my party hasn't really won a statewide election in, you know, 12 years now, 11 and why years. why is that? So, uh, I think there, the, the state has just uh, uh, become, uh, the numbers, uh, I'll be blunt, it's because of what's happened in the core cities. Um, and I don't know if that's through people changing their mind or through other immigration policies, uh, even from other states or whatever, but new people, but um, it's now 90-10 in some areas of Minneapolis. 90% Democrat, 10%. And you do, it's but very difficult. some of difficult. the farm communities, it's 80, 20 the other it's way. It's not, though. That's the problem. And some I mean, of them, yeah. Well, rare, and they're very small. And so... Gives us people like Michelle Bachman. Well, um, that the 6th district is kind of 60-40, you know. So you, when you have, you know, on a statewide basis, you can win even when control the legislature's Republicans because of the n districts. But when you have those kind of numbers coming out of the core cities, it's very hard to win statewide. Well, what here. we've had very throughout hard. the country uh, is that we've had gerrymandering in a lot of districts yes. where people are secure, and that's Republicans and Democrats, right, both parties. that they mm -hmm. set up the line so that they can't right. lose. I don't think that political parties should be responsible for districts. I think that there should mm -hmm. be impartial commissions that draw the lines, yeah, and so we can have really free elections, which we don't have now. Yeah, well, I agree. We do in Minnesota. I mean, in the last several redistricting, well, we do that here. It's yeah. set by well, it's done through courts <laughs> yeah. because we can't agree, which is actually a very fair process to do it that way, right? Our courts um, have been known as some of the best courts yeah, in the country. Generally, are right. Yeah, right. So. In fact, one of the great judges that we had was just here before you, Paul really? Anderson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Certainly is going to, you know, go down as one of the great judges of this state, and he's respected worldwide. Well, that's and he's an Anderson, so that's. And he's an yeah, Anderson, yeah, so yeah. Uh, notwithstanding that. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, no, I. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's um, it's been tough. Uh, my party, Republican Party, has you know had some very difficult time. We've talked about him. I was in you know, pretty heavily involved in kind of shooing out the f previous chair. Um, you were, and, and, uh, and obviously uh, you knew what you were doing as he left the party in terrible debt, yeah. as well as himself, apparently. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you also were outspoken in the Broadcorp case. Yeah. And look what happened in that case. He ended up settling for what he was originally offered. Yeah. And, but he cost the state more than half a million dollars. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That should not have been. Uh, you know, if people want to have affairs with their bosses, uh, 
that's their private yeah. business. It should yeah. not be public business. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it should. And the whole thing was handled poorly to begin with. Um, it was handled poorly by the um, the former Republican senators, many of whom are no longer didn't run for re-election, as you know. Um, uh, you know, the way they handled that and made that public, um, you know, with the Coke resignation of why. Yeah. Uh, that was handled very poorly, I think. Um, and, of course, uh, Michael Broadcorp suing was not <laughs> successful either. So it was just really, it was really it's bad. Just an embarrassment. And it's, yeah, and, and hopefully this, yeah. this <clears throat> is the end. Um, the Republican Party is climbing out of debt, and actually we're doing... Um, quite well now uh, since now we have a new chair again uh, Keith Downey who's a former state rep and frankly the PCR is back and that helps us that's the political contribution yeah, to the yeah, program. It's, uh, um, so we've been able to pay off uh, uh, pretty close to about a half million dollars just since April of our so you have a ways to go but you're still on we the are way really, back yeah, yeah. I think that, that a vigorous two-party system is really essential mm-hmm Yes. For government. I do too. I think you really have to have reasonable voices on both sides mm -hmm. yeah. that are willing to talk to each other, mm -hmm. to negotiate, not be ideologues mm -hmm. as we see in Washington. Mm -hmm. I do too. And we've, we've been missing that here in Minnesota. Certainly the since the collapse, so I say, of the Republican Party um, with the uh, financial situation and some of these other things that you mentioned, um, you know, it's really, it really has been a one party system. Uh, in, the, in the state. Uh, every I mean, statewide as a, office is as a controlled Democrat, by Democrat. The legislature you know, I say, uh, well, we waited a long time for this, but uh, <laughs> as a person looking at it impartially, I say we need strong two-party system. Yes. We need somebody yeah. who's ready to look at the other one yeah. and, yeah. if necessary, yeah. step yeah. on the brakes. Yeah, and I would I'd agree. So. Who's going to uh, succeed Michelle Bachman? Tom Emmer will win, I think. The, uh, the whoever is the nominee will be the next congressperson, the Republican nominee. Yeah, that's that's um, a district that's heavily, heavily Republican. Re heavily Republican, right. <coughs> and so even You think though, it's going to be Emmer? Yes, I do, yeah. Um, even with his latest gaffe? I mean, he's I, had many still, gaffes. Yeah, but, that, was uh, that was not... I mean, it was just dumb. Um, dumb is right. And well, I, he was, I think that's Tom He was Emmer. trying to help, help <laughs> a guy that helps the people in his community. He didn't get paid, but it was just not something he should have done. So, and he didn't know that it was going to be on, you know, on TV either. So, um, you know, he did a he did a testimonial for a guy's improvement shop. So, and who do you see running for governor? Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Um, with the names that are still being thrown out, you know, we at this point in time, mid-October, we have um, four or five candidates, um, but there's still talk about a uh, Julie Rose or Billy Ingrabitson or Marty Seifert getting right. Some one of these rural Democrats who actually I think would have a, a shot at maybe not Rosen, but the other two at the um, Rosen because I of think the, you need a name. Stadium. Yeah, but I think. Mm -hmm. um, it will be interesting to see who the nominee is. Clearly, there's going to be a primary um, on the Republican side this time, which is, uh, has not happened in a long, long time. And we've actually run out of time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pat Anderson, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Alan. Love being on. I just